Okay, continuing working with binary files, and uh, today we're going to be looking at a, a packet uh, file that was captured from doing a network sniffing, uh, either with Wireshark or TCP dump or EtherCap. Um, and if we just cat out this file, uh, first off, I'll list off. There's one file in here. We can see that it is about uh, seven and a half megabytes. And if I cat it out you'll see that there is definitely some binary data in there. Control C to stop that. If your terminal is messed up, you can always type reset and that should reset it for you because uh, sometimes that happens when you cut out something like that. Okay, so a lot of, a lot of binary stuff in there that we can't really read, but uh, there are strings in there that we can ring, read and we can use a program called strings, which is most likely already installed on your system uh, if you're running Linux. Uh, and we can string out that, and basically this is going to show anything that is a printable ASCII character. Boom, lots of stuff in there, and if you glance and you can see stuff that says Google and other stuff. Uh, you can even see some printer information from my network printer. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so I'm gonna control L to clear the screen there. So, uh, we saw that, so now let's start sorting through it. We this is sort of the process I go through. Next thing I would do is probably uh, sort and unique that uh, to remove any duplicates. Okay, and then I'll start looking for things that that might be URLs. So, you know, again, this is something that uh, you uh, have to kind of know what you're looking for, or you just poke around till you find what you're looking for. So I'm going to say look for any line that has HTTP, and I'll say dash I, so it's case insensitive. And uh, okay, so we got some stuff here. Some partial URLs uh, and I know right away uh, just based on this because I'm familiar with this because I've worked with it on my website which is actually what these links are probably from when I was sniffing is that these are YouTube um, images for videos so let's go ahead and try to find some of those so what I'm going to do now is I know that they're all going to be labeled uh, HQ default.jpg. So I'm going to cat out the cap file and then I'm going to grep for that. Okay, oh, we got a bunch of them, great. And we can see some of them, you know, they all have the get at the beginning here, they all don't start the same. Um, so let's trim it up a little bit. So what we'll do next is we'll say you said. And again, there's different ways to do this. You can use regular expressions, stuff like that. You can use awk. I'm just going to use said, and I'm going to say find all these get space lines and make them new lines. So if I do that, you can see everywhere that there was that, there's now an empty line, basically, for the most part. Uh, so now I'm going to take that, and I'm going to say use grep again. And there's probably a more efficient way to do this, but we're going to say uh, grep uh, the caret symbol, which means find lines that begin with, and we want the lines that begin with forward slash IV, but forward slash is a special character, so what we're going to say is we're going to say backslash forward slash IV. Okay, so now we're only getting those lines, but we also have extra data over here that we don't care about. Uh, so basically they're separated by space there, so we can separate them out by columns using awk. So I'm going to take the last command, just hitting up arrow again to get to the last command, and I'm going to put this into awk. And this is all stuff I've done in previous tutorials. We're just kind of using them all together now to accomplish a task. And what this is saying is use awk, and from the line that was uh, piped into it, print out just the first column. There we go, so we remove that end thing. Now, again, there might be uh, repeats in there. We can say, uh, pipe it into wc-l for list. Um, and uh, for line I mean, and we can see there's 135 lines. Let's go ahead and at this point sort dash unique that and uh, we'll count that out as well. And really there were no repeats, but if I had gone to the same site multiple times, uh, there possibly could have been repeats. So sort unique, not really necessary in this one, but now we're going to say while read, so we're going to read each line and uh, we're going to create a variable called jpeg. We're going to say do wget dash c, and we're going to say, oh, well, I kind of uh, skipped a step here. Uh, something that I already know um, is that these type of images start off with 
http colon four slash four slash i3 dot y uh, timg that's youtube image there i3 server dot com forward slash dollar sign jpeg and we're going to look into how you get that if you didn't know that there's ways you can poke around the file a little bit more and we're going to uh, save that now they're all called hq default dot jpeg so if i just download it as that uh, it's going to name them well i guess it w get i think numbers them but let's just give them a random name each because the names don't mean anything in this particular case. So I'm gonna use the random variable dot JPEG. I'm gonna say done. I'm gonna hit enter and uh, no such file directory. Oh, let's make a directory to put them in. Make directory JPEG. Now we'll do that. And there we go, we're downloading all those images. Now, of course, uh, you see these uh, URLs in the sniffed packet. If they are private links, you won't be able to get them this way. And momentarily, I'll show you how to actually pull the images out of the sniff packet. Because right now, we're just finding the URLs and then pulling them offline. So two different ways of doing things. If you can actually pull the images out of the sniff package, uh, there are some advantages to that. Um, and other advantages to doing it this way. Again, if it's a private site and you don't have a username and password, you may not be able to access it this way. Let me open up uh, my file browser here to the JPEG folder, and there you go. You can see that they were all YouTube images from my website. Uh, and again, I knew that uh, they started off. So I had a little foreknowledge on that. There are other things you could do, sort of like if we go back to just HQ default. Well, if I could type today. We can again, a, we'll say two, no, we'll say five, and dash b five. So let's say, find all the lines that say uh, hq default, and find, print not only that line, but five lines after and five lines before that. So there we go. And here, right away, we can see that, and we can see the host. So that's where you would find, if you didn't already know, that that's where the image is hosted at. And you can add that to the URL as we did in the little one-liner we did there. A little one-liner, it was a big one-liner. You can also see that it was called by this reference, which was my site, filmsichris.com. So a little more information there. Uh, you can see the user agent of who was browsing it uh, was using Linux, because it was me. Uh, and I was using uh, Mozilla, so, I, oh no, it looks like I was using, well, Chrome, Safari. I'm not really sure, <laughs> but we do know that I was on Linux. Uh, I was either using Chrome or Firefox, or really Ice Weasel, the same thing. Okay, so that's one way to pick through the file. And of course, you know, there's a lot of other stuff you can look at in there. Again, here we're looking at that. We could also just say JPEG, and we can look at other JPEGs as well. So here's a JPEG hosted on uh, tinypick.com. It's another website I went to when I was capturing this. You can see it was referenced of this site here. So I can right now I can just right-click and go to that site. But if we wanted to script it out, we could do a similar thing as I just did with YouTube pictures. But let's go another uh, route. Now, another way to pull out information from a cap file is, uh, I think I mentioned in a previous video, uh, using PhotoRec to recover files from a hard drive that have been deleted. I tried, I know of a way to get images and other files out using Wireshark, which I will show you at the end of this tutorial. I've been trying to find a way to do it from a script. So this is my thought process here. I use PhotoRec, which is part of the test disk package. It should be in repositories. And if I say PhotoRec dot, uh, the name of the cap file, net.cap, hit enter, and I'll just proceed through this just by doing all the default stuff very small file so it didn't take very long and now if I list out you can see there's a uh, recup folder and if I thunar, thunar is my file manager into there you can see we got some text files which is not going to show us anything more than uh, the strings command will probably show us more than that so that, that wasn't very helpful that was the first thing I tried next thing is a program called foremost which should be in your repositories, foremost netcat, and I'll hit enter, 
and it went through. Again, it's not a very big file, so it didn't take very long. It created an output folder. So if I go Thunar output, you can see it pulled GIFs, HTML files, JPEG files, put them in separate folders, and create an audit file. So I can go in here to the uh, GIF folder, and you can see we have some GIFs here. And open that up. I would open it up in a web browser. So we did get those. There are some files that didn't pull out right. Uh, it's corrupt. Sometimes that's just because things get lost when you're sniffing. Maybe they didn't get fully downloaded and maybe the sniffer didn't capture them. But we got a good, good little decent uh, output here. Uh, HTML, once again, text. We can get that stuff with strings. But let's look at the JPEGs because we know that there's a bunch in there just from YouTube. And I also went to tinypick.com. So go in there. Oh, OK. So it kind of pulled them but most of them are corrupt. My assumption on why this happens is that they're, they're fragmented. They aren't in one place in that file. So it finds the header for an image, starts to copy it, but then the rest of the file is somewhere else in the cap file because you, the, the network is downloading all these different images and so they get put into the cap file in different places. So I have yet to find a really good way from the shell to, in a script, pull out images and other files. Unfortunately, if you know of a way, please let me know. But now I'm going to show you a way that definitely works, but it's not uh, scripted out. It's using Wireshark, which you could use to capture packets, but it also is really good. So I usually capture packets using EtherCap. Uh, but Net, uh, sorry, Wireshark has a lot of great tools for looking through and manipulating and pulling stuff out of. Uh, capture packets. So I open up the netcap file or whatever the name of your cap file is, pcap or whatever, and I'm going to go up here to file, objects, http, and here it's going to list all the files that it found. And it, right away you can see all the HQ defaults from the uh, YouTube server. So what I'm going to do is, again, let me just go over that, file, uh, export objects, HTTP, let it find it all. I'm going to say save all. I'm going to do here, I'll just do, I'll just create a folder called sharks. I'm going to go up here, name. Don't create a new folder. What it's doing is when you click OK, it's going to create a folder called shark. It's kind of confusing because if you create the folder called shark and then go into it, the OK button is going to be grayed out. Just type the name of the folder you want, click OK. It's always going to say this. I've never had it once not say this. Some files could not be saved. And again, uh, I'm assuming that this is because when you're capturing packets, you stop the capture in the middle of stuff being downloaded, the end files are going to get corrupted. I'm assuming that's what that is. Don't worry about it. I've never seen it not say that. I'm going to close this out now. And again, now I can use, again, my file manager, whatever file manager you use to open up the folder shark. And there we go, we got the images. These are all images that were captured in the network uh, capturing. So you can see all the uh, YouTube videos and videos from TinyPick, which I just went to and saw their recent uploads just to capture stuff. Glad there's nothing too inappropriate that I'm seeing in here. Uh, as well as uh, HTML files and, and basically any file that it saw, J, uh, a JavaScript files. Um, so that is the best way that I know of to pull files out of a capture packet. Um, if you know of a way to do it through the shell that works, that you can script out, that's great. But if not, Wireshark is great at doing that. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that uh, you enjoy all my tutorials. Please visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. Also, if you enjoy my videos, consider uh, becoming a supporter by going to patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. There you can become a supporter and get rewards for being a supporter and also get a lot more input on what type of videos I make. I hope that you did enjoy this, and I do hope that you have a great day. Oh, also, I'll put the uh, notes to all this in a link in the description. Have a great day. I to scrap what I had been working on and start from scratch usually using Babylon JS. Both are great platforms. I just found that Babylon JS more suited what I was going for with this uh, project. It is still in the very early stages. A lot of work needs to be done and a lot of changes will be made.
but here's If you enjoy my tutorials and would like to see more, please think about contributing to my Patreon account at patreon.com forward slash metalx1000.